All right, this is one of my more daunting problems. It reads like a book. It says that environmental testing is a key use of ion concentration calculations. This is true, actually, because depending on the concentration of a particular ion in solution, you might be able to drink it or not. So, and again, this is all in just the heart of trying to come up with problems. So I have no idea if sodium carbonate is actually used or not. I just made up the problem. So let's see here. To make water drinkable, sodium carbonate can be added to bind with not only heavy metals like lead and mercury, but also calcium and magnesium found in well water. But if enough sodium carbonate isn't added, the residual heavy metals build up in the human body. So this is kind of starting to sound like it's going to be a solution stoic problem because they already mentioned this sodium carbonate up here, and then we're talking about residual ions. So that kind of sounds like we're going to have to do some ion concentration stuff. Too much carbonate leaves the water with a bitter taste. Ah, now I definitely know that I'm going to have to do some kind of ion concentration-y something. How much carbonate should be added in order to completely precipitate 250 grams of lead nitrate in a 150 ml water sample? Ah, now we're getting somewhere. It says the carbonate sample is dissolved in 100 milliliters of water. That sounds like a stoic problem to me. Keep in mind, there should be no lead for remaining. So I want to make sure that this is my limiting reagent, that all of this is used up. Since they gave me the grams, I don't really care about the volume. I only care about the grams here. Let's see, final part says, if the ca carbonate concentration exceeds two molars, the water will have a bitter taste, does it? So two things I need to figure out. How much sodium carbonate do I need to precipitate all of this lead? And how much carbonate ion is left over in my solution? So there's two ways that you can do this. The beauty of stoic is that once you have a balanced chemical equation like this, you can relate any two chemicals in this equation. So we can relate iron nitrate to sodium nitrate. We can relate iron, uh, excuse me, sodium carbonate to lead carbonate. It really doesn't matter. But my lead is binding with my carbonate to make my lead carbonate solid. That's the solid we're producing here. So what you could do is you could just stoic from the lead nitrate grams to moles and instead of going from moles of your reactant to moles of your product you could go moles of reactant to moles of reactant since that's not the way I've ever really approached it in my class I decided to approach it from a um, a little more direct or excuse me a little more typical uh, standpoint so what I did here was I first calculated how much lead carbonate I was actually making since this is the path that I always tell my students to go first uh, to do first, excuse me, I decided to approach this problem from this perspective first. So, since I want this to be my limiting reagent, this is how much lead carbonate, you can't see that, I will make because even if I add more sodium carbonate than I need, that would give me a higher amount of this lead carbonate. So I want this to be my limiting reagent, means this is the amount I will make, means I don't care about any other numbers. So now, according to the path that I've taught my students, we would do a quote-unquote excess reagent calculation, where we would start with this number and stoic backwards to the sodium carbonate that I'm looking for. And that's this setup here. So we're going from moles of lead carbonate, converting to moles of sodium carbonate, and then back to grams to get this number here. Now the whole reason that I stopped at moles up here, typically we go all the way to grams because most problems ask for the mass of the solid product. But I knew I was going to do this excess reagent calculation, which would require me to convert this to moles first anyway. So I just stopped there. So according to this calculation, I'm going to need 116.42 grams of sodium carbonate to completely react all of the lead 4 ion in that 250 grams of lead nitrate. So that takes care of the first part of the problem. We figured out how much carbonate we would need. The second part asks if the water will have a bitter taste. Uh, that requires the molarity of the carbonate to be 2 molar, so 2 moles per one liter of solution. But before I show you the math, let's stop and think about that for just a second. Think about excess reagents. Since this was my limiting reagent and I figured out exactly how much sodium carbonate I would need to get, again, exactly this number, technically this 
and this should run out at the same time. In this compound here, we really don't care about the nitrate because it does not change. It's not present in my net ionic equation. It's just the vehicle by which the lead is introduced into the solution. So my lead runs out. All of it is precipitated in making this compound here. Down here, the same thing is true. In sodium carbonate, I only care about the carbonate. The sodium is just the vehicle. You can't pick carbonate up off of the shelf. It has to be bound to something else. So to create exactly this much product, I would need exactly this much carbonate, since it's a one-to-one -one relationship here. So that means that I should have also run out of carbonate. There shouldn't be any left. It should all be present in this solid, bound up. But just in case you don't believe me, here's the math. So I started off with uh, 5.492 times, uh, excuse me, moles of the carbonate. Ah, flour. In order to figure out how many moles of carbonate I would need to make that, we need to look at that lead carbonate um, formula over there on the left, and we notice that per one mole of lead carbonate, I get two moles of carbonate. So that tells me that I need 1.0984 moles of carbonate that are used to make my solid. Well, I don't want to know how many are used, I want to know how many are left over, which means I need to know how many moles of carbonate I started with. Since my carbonate is coming from my sodium carbonate, this is the number I'm going to start with. Here it is. I need to convert that to moles since all of our relationships are molar relationships. So this is the formula mass of sodium carbonate. And then from there, we're going to look at the carbonate molecule and notice that per one mole of sodium carbonate, I get one mole of carbonate uh, atoms, or not atoms, molecules, polys. So that tells me I had 1.0984 moles of carbonate to start with. So started with minus used gives me zero. There is no carbonate left, so no, the water will not have a bitter taste. So that's just an application example of how stoic and solution chemistry can be used to answer a slightly more complex question. If you have any questions for me on how uh, any of this came together, feel free to leave questions in the comment box down below, and I will answer you as soon as possible. Thanks a bunch.